No matter whether you believe it or not, the law of attraction is happening around you. What you are seeing in your reality is what you have previously thought about and brought into your reality. Um, help us help us r- wrap our our pragmatic skeptical minds around this kind of concept. I you know this is, this is exactly what we speak about in my book Be It Till You Become It and I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. It's where neuroscience meets ancient wisdom. It's where the pragmatic mind meets the new neuroplasticity of our brain. It's where the new thoughts actually take over. Check this out. No matter whether you believe it or not, the law of attraction is happening around you because what you are seeing in your reality is what you have previously thought about and brought into your reality five days ago, 30 days ago, a year ago. If you constantly think, I'm going to go into some science here for you, for the pragmatic people. If you think about negative thoughts or you think, actually, I don't care about this. It doesn't mean anything. Just this is really interesting. It's a part of our brain called the reticular activating system. Okay. Hear me out for this one second and take a note down. If you want to learn something incredible today, it's called the RAS, the reticular activating system. And it filters 2 million bits of data every second, colors, sounds, things you see, everything, all your senses, but not smell. And what it does is it filters things that you deem as important. It shows you things that you deem as important. So what do you deem as important? Well, anything that you focus your mind on is what your brain deems as important. So if you are focusing your mind on, oh, it's not going to work for me. That didn't work for this one. Oh, she just got lucky. Oh, he just did well. He was given it all as a child. Whatever these negative thoughts are, but you know what? Your reticular activating system is going to show around you evidence to prove that belief system is real. So you have a choice every day. Are you going to program your mind to show you outcomes and possibilities of a new beginning, a new start, a new outcome that you do want in your life, like abundance, you want financial wealth. Maybe you want your your company to start doing seven, eight, nine figures. Maybe you want to improve yourself in some way. You want confidence. You want happiness. You want a partner. Whatever it might be, you it starts here in the mind. You have to start thinking the thoughts, which is where it programs at that base level, the root seed level in the brain, your thoughts have a frequency. So if you start thinking, I am worthy of financial abundance, I am worthy of getting that bonus, I am worthy of changing my life and being happy, et cetera, whatever these things are, your reticular activating system in the lower part of your brain, it starts to work for you and show you evidence around you, opportunities, events, and people and places to show your belief system is real. So whether you believe in the law of attraction or not, that is the law of attraction right there. Just that one piece of science, the reticular activating system. So if you start to accept that your thoughts carry weight, they have power, whether they are positive or negative, it's the same frequency. If you're having a super positive thought or a super negative thought, it's coming to fruition. It doesn't matter which one it is. It's coming to fruition. So have and choose thoughts to remain in your mind, which serve you in the long run, which serve you 30 days later. Because you look around you now, if you've got chaos in any area of your life, if you see chaos in any area, it is because you did not value that area. You didn't care about that area as much. And you haven't been thinking truly within you good thoughts and feelings around that area. So whether that's health or in your spiritual life or in your brain, in your mind, doesn't matter what area of your life it is. It could be in your relationships with people. Any area of your life, if you actually inside of you do not believe you are truly worthy of having a healthy friendship, a healthy relationship, getting that bonus at work, improving your health, if you don't believe you're truly worthy of it, honey, it's not going to happen for you because you're actually attracting around you without realizing bad possibilities people who are coming to you with that you're like oh why do I keep copying and pasting the same relationship because you're attracting to you just copying and pasting the same person in a different body because you believe inside of you ultimately you're not worthy of having a loving relationship and how do you know if you actually inside of you have these self-limiting beliefs you got to do the work. you got to ask yourself, what's your relationship with money? What's your relationship around love? Were you loved as a child? Because if you weren't, you didn't feel loved as a child, you didn't feel you could ever give affection, you're going to struggle with it in your later life. 
So you've got to start to look within and say, actually, I do need to do the work. If I don't do the work on myself, then I'm never going to see a different reality around me. Because if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. Why don't you tell us, if you would, like, how did, how did you get here? How did you get millions and millions of followers and influence all over the world and a best-selling book and all this stuff? Like, like it seems pretty improbable at one point. Totally. Well, Jeff, you know what? It did not start here. I always say to people, don't judge me by who I am today. Judge me by how many times I have fallen down and got back up. That's how my journey began. I, I fell down. I had hit a rock bottom. I was in a bad place in my life. I was emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially drained. I'd lost everything in my career. I'd lost all my money to the point of not just being broke. I was homeless. And there was me trying to raise this child as a single mom and living in a world which doesn't do any favors for you and living in a place where I really had everything going against me. And I said, I've got to get out of here. And then an illness hit me and I was bed bound. So now I've moved back in with my mom and finally gotten over the, the emotions I was dealing with there and the traumas. I moved back in with her and I'm bed bound overcoming this illness. And the anxiety was so bad. Now, from that place of being in a rock bottom, from that place of being in my worst, I realized there is no place other than looking inward. When you have nothing outward to see, when you're, you're in your worst and most challenging time of your life. And for me, that was it in every way. And I was so alone. I felt so, so alone that I just looked inward and I started doing work inwardly. Now, from that place, I started to build. That's where the MBS method came from that you just talked about. We'll talk about that in a bit. And I started to understand that to build myself back up in this new digital world we live in, that I had a phone, okay? So when I was homeless, the thing I did have was a phone. And okay, I didn't have battery most of the time, but you know what? When I did, I would look on Instagram because I was, I was still a young girl at the time, right? And I would be in this place and I'd be thinking, what can I, where can I go from here? I just want to make food for my son. I just want to be a role model for him. I just want to go out there and actually look after this child and go on to be a role model in the world to others. And, and real quick, how long ago was this? Four years. Four years. Okay. Yeah. So it was only four years ago. Yeah. So I was, you know, I was in my twenties at the time. And so I was like, okay, I've, I want to do something bigger. So I looked at Instagram and I looked, if I could just make some money, like, these people on here as a creator, as a content creator, if I could just make some money through Instagram, I can get off the street. I can, I can get out of my mom's basement by this point. Right. So I decided to start going into charity shops and dressing up. And this is honestly the start of my journey. I would go into a charity shop and I would put on anything that I found in there. And then I would take pictures of myself in the charity shop with a selfie camera or stick it on the side on a timer. And then I would leave the shop with 30 days worth of posts. I then started uploading those onto Instagram. And one of the brands contacted me who I tagged and said, hey, we want to pay you. And that was the first $150 that began my comeback of where I am today. So that's in a, in a charity shop. That's like, that's like a, like, I, you're from the United Kingdom, right? Is that like a Salvation Army or like a retail yes. shop where they raise yeah. money for? Okay. Yes, right. exactly. Where people donate clothes and old things they don't use anymore. It's where and it's where uh, it's where Macklemore bought his yeah, that blanket song. that smelled like pee or whatever. <laughs> yeah, great song. But you know, so this is it. And I, I began there, and I it was a very sad, but actually in that moment I started to feel empowered. Now my next shift came from when I was standing in front of a mirror one day at my mom's wedding. I was meant to walk down the aisle with her as a bridesmaid. And I was ill at the time. And so I'd overcome this first bit of money to get off there, okay? So I'd, I'd made a little bit of money back. And at that point I decided, I didn't know where I was going. And I looked in the mirror one day crying, ill, thinking I'm never gonna get out of being sick. This is me for the rest of my life. And then suddenly I started playing a motivational track in the background. I was listening to Denzel Washington and it started to like really preach life over me. It was just like, oh my God. It was like bringing my body to life, yeah? And then I started saying these words to myself, like 
this is only temporary. You are going to be something greater than this. You're bigger than this. And I started preaching life over myself. And suddenly it like fell into my hands. It was like, you're going to be a motivational speaker. And I was like, me? Who? How can I be a motivational speaker? I was like, I'm on the floor here. Like I can barely raise my child at this stage alone. And how am I going to do this? And I, I just remember holding on to those words. I remember holding on to those words. You're going to be a motivational speaker and you're going to help people. And that was my, my dream. And it suddenly transformed everything for me. And I decided I'm going to heal from this illness, but I'm not just going to heal. I'm going to heal. And I'm going to go on to share this mission, how I healed from this and how I bought myself back from being broke to living my best life, living in my dream homes around the world, being a best-selling author today, having 10 million followers on Instagram and being able to monetize that and make millions all the time from it. And how have I done that? I'm going to share that with the world. And I made that my absolute mission to go on and share that with the world because I didn't start in Instagram. I wasn't born into Instagram. I wasn't spoon fed Mm -hmm. an allowance. I wasn't given anything different to anyone else. So if I can do it, I always say to my friends and my, my people, you can do it too. You can have be and do anything you want to. You just have to wake up and recognize what you do have around you. And gratitude is the key to that. We all have something to be grateful for. But anyway, my my method was born out of that because I would practice my method every day. And that's what healed me physically, mentally. And, um, you know, there I was. And that listening to that track and preaching life over myself saying you are bigger than this you're gonna be bigger than this you've got something greater than this you know and I speak to the men because the men can go on and take this story and go and create something great in their life and be an inspiration to other men I speak to the women out there and the way that women go and do something wake up and you can you can have be and do anything you want the same way and go and inspire other women so anyone can do this this is simply about the awakening of you because if I could do it coming from a place of pain, challenge, adversity, like the 16th century poet Rumi says, let your pain be your cure. My pain was my cure. Well, you know, it's, I mean, first of all, it's, it's an amazing story and, and I'm, I'm hoping we can, we can dig into it a little further um, and, and really, really kind of humanize and personalize it for people. Cause that's what I found doing what I do, you know, being is, since I started Entra, especially, and we, and we just have, you know, students coming in that are like, people are so desperate to shift their life. And, and a lot of people, like a lot of people are in pain right now. I mean, the, I don't think they've put the data out on 2021 yet, but I know for 2020, they actually delayed the release of the general social survey here in the United States, which has been released every year since 1972, that basically reports on how happy we are as people. And they delayed it because of, you know, issues related to data collection and the pandemic and stuff. But in 2019, it was 14% of people were very happy. And it's tanked since, obviously. I mean, we're in like single digits. You know, nine out of 10 people are, are in serious pain, emotional, psychological, sometimes physical. Um, and so I'm really, I, I want to really, I mean, not to sound morbid, but like I kind of want to dig into it, into your pain, right? Like where you are coming from. I'm reading a book right now you may have read Outwitting the Devil, by, which is originally by Napoleon Hill, but it was only released in the last 10 years um, by Sharon Lecter. Mm-hmm. Uh, the co- you probably know Sharon Lecter, co-author yeah. of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a really, really powerful female uh, influencer and business mind. Um, and she was retained by the Napoleon Hill Foundation to actually release Outwitting the Devil because back when he wrote it in like the 20s and 30s, his wife wouldn't let him publish it because she was worried that by talking about the devil, they were going to get attacked, you know, and it was a more, I guess, religious time. And so anyway, but in it, he's talking about that the most powerful force that the devil uses is what he calls hypnotic rhythm, that people get into these rhythms of life that are, that are basically a form of hypnosis. And, and, and the devil's kind of revealing his playbook um, in the book. And And Napoleon Hill basically says, adversity is how you snap out of hypnotic rhythm. That's lit. Adversity is a tool that anybody can use to force themselves to try on new thoughts, adopt new behaviors, and break the hypnosis of the rhythms that they've been in. And so whenever I hear people talking about hitting rock bottom and then bouncing, now I have a context for that. It's like, oh, something broke the rhythm. 
for you. It's wow. not out of your hypnosis, right? And now, and all of a sudden you're entertaining these thoughts that sounded crazy. Like, oh, I'm going to be a motivational speaker. I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. But that's not any crazier than any other thought. It's just, it was just different than what you'd been hypnotized to think by yeah. your trauma up to that yes. point. Yes, you've got it. God, the way you've described that is so spot on. And I've never even looked at it like that. You know, when I was, I think you get into a rut, you get into a routine and who we are in our thirties is an amalgamation of our habits that we have formed and adopted and accepted. And that's who we've become. So that's why I was, I've, I found myself pushing away love. I found myself pushing away partners. I found myself pushing away good job opportunities, the same things, because I was an amalgamation of my habits. And I was just thinking, okay, you just go to work, you eat, you sleep. You just go to work, you eat, you sleep. That's what this is. No, that's the hypnotic. As you're saying that state, that's the, the way that you're, program to think but actually no that's not the case we program our own thoughts we are what we think about everything around us comes down to our thoughts our feelings and our actions and if we change any one of those things you will change your outer reality in my first book i said a quote your outer reality is a direct reflection of your inner self-beliefs you know, you, you said something just now about seeing a reality around, around you. And, and I think this is, this has been one of the, the awarenesses that has changed my life so dramatically. And that I can honestly say, if I hadn't had this shift in awareness, certainly what I'm doing now wouldn't have, wouldn't, would not be happening. This business I'm building, this platform I'm building, like none of this would be happening um, if I hadn't had this shift. And it sounds similar to the shift that you had where, you know, you talked about the reticular activating system. And it's funny because I'm, I'm just putting the final edits on my book. And in my book, I talk a lot about the reticular activating system. So I'm like super steeped in the neuroscience right now. And so I think one of the biggest fallacies that people have in general about the world around them is the idea that consciousness or, or our experience of life is based on what happens around us and that we detect it through our senses. And then, and then we, you know, it essentially that our experience is something from the outside coming into us. I think that's why that's how people think of like going through life. Right. But what they don't know is the reticular activating system, which is, you know, is kind of a multifaceted component in the brain. There's a piece of it, which is the extended reticular thalamic activating system, ERTOS, that actually is a consciousness projector. We are not consciousness receivers. We are consciousness projectors. And so the ERTOS through as part of the reticular activating system, literally all we have in life is we can, we can see colors, we can hear sounds, and we can feel energy. That's all it is, right? And maybe our ears detect energy and vibration. And you mentioned smell. Smell actually goes in a different route in the brain. But so as we go through life, we say, what happened? Oh, uh, a cat ran in the street and it got hit by a car and the guy tried to break and, and it died. Well, that's not actually what you observed. What you observed was colors shifting. That's actually all you observed was some colors shifting. You explained it, You're, the consciousness of what happened is something that was manufactured internally out of memory, out of instinct, out of emotional memory. And it was literally painted onto the colors that you saw like you would paint meaning onto a canvas. And when people realize that you are constantly generating your own awareness of what's happening in the world and your own consciousness and your own story and your own explanation, and that all you're actually getting from the outside world around you is like temperature, vibration, and vibration and color, then you realize I am literally making this shit up as I go all the time, which means all I, all it is, is, is coming from in here. And it's the most empowering thing in the world because you can like, it's like the, it's like the, this red pill that everybody has in their hand, but they're scared to take. But like, if you would just take it and realize you're literally creating it all the time, you can create whatever you want. It blew my mind anyways. And this, I wouldn't be doing this, what I'm doing. This blows I, my mind too. I love geeking out on neuroscience. This is, 
we we create everything around us. We are the architect of our life. We get to choose the people, the places, everything we encounter. Yes, things do happen to you. There, you know, in Buddhism, they believe that actually situations are attracted to you. There's other things right. like that as well. You know, I, without getting into dogma or any of that, I, I believe many different things. But on a non-dogmatic view, and uh, you know, very scientific, how we're talking, actually, every single thing around us is created right here as a mere thought. It starts as a mere thought. Think of everything that's been created. The light bulb, electricity, Wi-Fi, everything was a mere thought in somebody's mind and it came to fruition. But a dream without goals is just a dream. You have to apply goals in order to make that dream come true. So that's the next part of it. You think about it, what you want, you think about, feeling good now we start to add feeling to it so you think about the thing you want you feel good towards it and then you add an action you have to have all the parts in coherence your heart your brain must be in coherence you can't just think oh yeah today i'm gonna have a great day and then whoops you didn't you have to genuinely feel good if i feel good about something i will bring it to fruition faster than if i feel negatively about it or i don't believe i'm worthy of it so this retraining your thought patterns, choosing what you're going to hardwire into your brain. Are you going to hardwire thoughts into your brain and create neural pathways that serve you? Or are you going to leave the old neural pathways? Because neuroplasticity is happening until the day we die. Did you know that? Till the day we die. So you know this because of your book. So it's happening. So and, and, and define neuroplasticity, if you would, for the audience. So neuroplasticity is like when you learn a language, it's creating new synaptic connections in our brain of a skill of something. And it could be anything. It could be a new thought, a new feeling, a new anything. Neuroplasticity is the creation of that in the most basic and, terms. And historically, the, the, the conventional wisdom has been that neuroplasticity dramatically declines with age. And the research now is showing that essentially what we believe about neuroplasticity becomes self-fulfilling. Incidentally, what we believe about willpower has also been like willpower has been completely debunked in the last 15 years, as has this concept of declining neuroplasticity, that the reason it's harder, the reason we think that it's harder not to eat, eat you know, cheesecake at, at 10 o'clock at night or, or not to eat a tub of ice cream. The reason it's harder is because we think it's harder. Yeah. And the reason it's harder to build new synaptic connections when we're 75 years old is because we think it's harder to build new synaptic connections mm -hmm. when we're 75 years old. We think that old dogs can't learn new tricks. Meanwhile, we're depriving the old dogs of learning the new tricks because of what we're telling them is, is true about themselves that isn't about, and we're doing it to ourselves. Correct. So I just want to say Correct. that, like, like the, the science is on our side here that you don't have to be 25 years old. No, nope. to completely rewire your brain. And it's harder after 25 years old. We're not saying it's easier because before 25, it is easier to learn a new language and a skill. So anyone who's under 25 right now, high five, go do your thing, go and create your new but, brain. But the life. reason it's harder is because we're more attached. Our yes. identity is more attached yes. to our knowledge as yes. a function of identity, not because of anything intrinsic in the brain. Exactly. I love this. This is exactly it. So you can recreate your brain the same way within seven years, we're a whole new body. You can recreate your thoughts. Should I tell you the best exercise? I give this to all my clients, right? Anyone write this down if you're listening and you want to take something away right now and try this. Do three circles. One, two, three. Okay. So around each other, one circle, then one circle around that one circle around that in the middle of that first circle, put your, your name. Okay. And then I like to store a little stick man of myself, little stick man around it. I like to write who I believe I am at my highest. Okay. Not the negative thoughts and not the self pity and the self doubt, not the imposter syndrome, the version of me that I believe I am. So I'm, I'm a speaker. I'm an author. I'm a mindset coach. I'm a social media marketing guru, like all these cool things, right? Write down your things. So whoever you are and you're writing it down, you're a top sales rep you are a nurse and you love family, all these things that you want to write down, okay? 
And then I like to put on there like great wife, great mom, all mm-hmm. the things that I believe that I am. So Jeff would be like, world's number one daddy. Like he's amazing. He's an incredible speaker, all these things. Okay. So now you write all this down in your first circle. In the circle around it, I want you to write down your thoughts. So write down as that version of you, what thoughts this version of you would be having. So I think positively. I think abundantly. I am free. I am filled with new wisdom. I am open to new ideas. I'm open to new possibilities. Your new thought processes, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, in a minute, it will make sense. Around that next circle, you write the feelings as that future self. So the version of you you want to be, what feelings would they be having? Because I sure as hell can tell you now, the thoughts and feelings you are writing down right now are not the thoughts and feelings that you are having if you are not showing up as that version of you that you want to be. So there's a distance between you and that thing. It's on a pedestal. And what does that mean? It's because your thoughts and your feelings are the behaviors of a different version of you you're still having the thoughts and feelings of the old version of you and so no wonder this stuff isn't showing up in your life whether it's material stuff or whether it's great achievements in your life because you are not thinking and being the version of you that you need to be you need to look at this circle okay in a minute i'll give you the final part of the exercise and tell you how to connect it so your feelings are super positive super good really empowered you're feeling amazing every day. You're feeling uplifted. You're feeling great because you listen to Jeff's podcast every day and you get so much value from him and his amazing guests and you read a book a week or whatever these feelings are. And then finally, your actions in that final circle. In that final circle, you put your, in that, around that bit, around the edge, your actions. What actions does that higher version of you make every day? So they post on Instagram all the time because your authority needs to be accelerated if you're going to be that version of you. They're getting themselves out there to the world. That version of you is credible. That version of you is recognized in the press. So you, that person has a PR guy or whatever it is. You need to look at that version of you that you want to be all around that third circle, okay? Actions that you take every day. You take your kids to school because what's life without spending time with your kids if you've got kids? Um, maybe you take your dog for a walk what's life if you don't walk your dog every day you understand so what does it mean to you and you put your feelings there okay now to connect it all you have to be really honest with yourself and to write a little list of thoughts feelings and actions that you currently do in the version of you as you are now that don't serve you that are not in those circles because they're not good ones they're whining moaning putting yourself down feeling sad allowing negative self-talk to get the better of you. You talk about other people. You waste time eating crisps all day and gelato. And actually you should be working out and feeling your best. Or maybe you just don't do anything with your kids and you know you should. Whatever these things are, write down that little list of things and you're going to root them out of your garden. You're going to take those out one by one by one and reframe your life one by one through these new habits, these new thoughts. It takes 21 days to form a small habit and 66 days to form a big habit. I hope that helps you. So, yeah, I mean, and, and, and I, I can't say I did it exactly like that, um, but it's funny, right around the time I was kind of getting ready to launch what became Entra, I did an exercise and I teach this exercise in, in a couple of different Entra courses called Needs, Wants, and Preferences where I essentially, and you, you talked about thoughts, feelings, and actions. I went through and defined myself according to needs, wants, and preferences. Love it. And, and it was the same thing. It was like, okay, to really understand myself, what do I believe that I need? What do I believe that I want? And what do I believe that I, it, I would simply prefer? Like, yes. oh, what, you know, because we use language, we use these words interchangeably, but it's like, well, do you want Mexican food or Italian food? And it's like, yeah that's not really a want. That's more of just like a preference. Like right now I'd prefer Italian, right? So organizing myself. And what I realized is there's things that I need that I think I'm telling myself I need that I don't actually need. Yeah. Like they're not on Maslow's hierarchy. Like I don't actually need this. I don't need, you know, a new 
whatever, a new PlayStation or a new, you know, whatever these things are anyway. And it was, and it was really cool. Like when you do these ruthless, they talk about this in, in 12 step programs, right? The ruthless inventory of self. When you just put down on paper, all your, yeah. all your crap, uh-huh. And, and it's not unkind. It's just honest. Honest. Yeah. Oh, it's, and it's brutal. And, but it is, but it's so empowering. It's so catalyzing. And, it, and in a way it's so s- silly, it's silly and almost childish. Cause you look at it and you go, Oh, that's annoying. I don't, I don't like that person. I'm not going to do that anymore. And it's like, once you get it out of you on paper, it kind of loses some of its power. It does. And it's the same way putting things down on paper that you actually want to achieve. Right. That activates your ventrolateral prefrontal cortex in the brain, which you know about. And that helps you to actually achieve your goal faster. By you writing it down, you're bringing it to the surface, you're acknowledging it. And you're kind of a little bit like in, in physics, you know, in quantum physics, when you watch the atom, when you see the atom, okay, it, it does a completely different dance to what it does when you're not observing it. No different to this. You're observing your own behavior. So you're like, oh no, that has to stop and change. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to let you know, you can get a free copy of my book, The Millionaire Shortcut, which shows you the fastest way to become a millionaire in the new economy. And there's a special link just for this episode in the description. So thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. But by the way, changing a habit, you know, it's difficult when you, when you and I first began these awakenings, these journeys to the person that we are today, it's difficult when you drink from a cup with a different hand, when you brush your teeth with a different hand, when you write with your other hand, it feels weird. It, it aches. It feels odd. Your d- brain you, likes- were you direct? Were you intentionally referencing my very bizarre personal development experiment I did in 2017, or was that just a total coincidence? Total coincidence, obviously you want to hear about it. Oh, what well just, it? yeah, for a year, my, you know, people always make these new year's resolutions, right? Yeah, yeah. And I've always hated new year's resolutions. I'm like, it's so dumb. If I want to yeah. do it, I'll do it today. I'm not going to wait till new year. Yes. So, so I'm like, okay, how can I make a new year's resolution that does, that doesn't annoy me? And it was like, okay, for the entire year of 2017, I'm going to brush my teeth only with my left hand. And I forced myself to, br- and it was so awkward. I'm like sm- hitting know. myself in the face and <laughs> stabbing my gums and like my toothbrush is like coming out my cheek because my <laughs> left hand's so awkward and it like, it hurt, right? I was like bruising my mouth. But after a while I got the hang of it. I'm telling you, 2017, so many amazing, weirdly creative things happened that ultimately led me to the place of doing what I'm doing now. That was like, the year of gestation wow. for so much cool creative stuff in my life. And I swear to you to this day, down it's to that. Because I was waking up every morning brushing my teeth with my left hand. And just that little bit of a curveball through my whole it, you know what it did? It snapped all my hypnotic rhythms every morning. Wow. First act out of the gate was to break my hypnotic rhythm with do something you, unfamiliar. Do you still brush your teeth with your left hand? No, now I mix it up. I'm totally ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. Oh my God, it. that's amazing. Okay, so that's really interesting. That's the coolest experiment ever. <laughs> that you were waking up the unfamiliar and, and making it familiar. That's amazing. Guys, I should try something like that. At the moment, I'm doing this really great experiment with rice. You probably heard of it. Um, Dr. I'm going to say his name wrong, Himoto. He created, he- Masaru Himoto. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah. He, he, oh, really, yeah. he really is wonderful. And mm. it's, you know, we're, we're speaking over rice with pot. We've got three jars in our cupboard and one we're preaching love over it. The other one we're saying really nasty things to it, hate, right? And the third one we're ignoring. And I kid you not, I've seen people do this over the years and I'm, I'm really researching into water at the moment because we are water and predominantly water and this planet is and the numbers and the sort of, you know, the golden ratio, everything is so in alignment when you look at it, which is what he's tapped, he tapped into before he passed. Um, but the, the glass jar with the rice in, we obviously you cook the rice first and you put it in three jars. So all of them technically should just go off if you would leave it. But check this out. The one you ignored, it's just starting to shrink and just kind of dissolve. It's so weird. It's staying like going a bit of a yellow color. The one we screamed hate over is filled with mold and black. And the one which we're speaking love over and gratitude is so fresh and white. No different. I think there's like one dot of black on it, one like tiny, tiny, tiny dot of black. 
but it's incredible. It's like, it's like Cindy Crawford's mole. It's just a beauty mark. <laughs> it's just it's so beautiful. Looking at the rhymes. It's so beautiful. It's, it's amazing no. because it's, it freaked me out though. Cause it's like, we all, we, we can live. We, if we speak bad stuff about other people to ourselves, you're creating this in your body and your outer reality. It's here in the yeah. rhymes. And, and here's the thing. If I, I mean, I've, I've, I've looked at, coffee book like I actually bought a coffee table book of of Masaru Emoto pictures of the ice crystals and stuff so I'm I've really studied this but I can say if I didn't know what you were talking about I agree it would sound completely weird let me bring this together with with where we started so so going back four or five years yeah single mom homeless uh, dealing with an illness. I don't know how much you know if there's any more detail you want to share on that but like really low point in your life. A, what would you, I'm going to ask you a multi-part question. What would you now go back and say to that person? And then also, second question is, how would that person, do you think, respond to what it is that you would say to her? And then I'll ask my third question, but go, go ahead with those. Love it. Oh my gosh, powerful. Well, when, you're in the, when you're in a really bad place, I'll go for the thing which is which I would say to that person, to that young version of me, that that girl who was lost, confused, distraught, in rock bottom in every way. I would whisper in her ear, her ear, believe that you can achieve anything you can see in your mind. The future is not yet written; it's in your hands. That's in my new book, actually. And I have to say that is exactly what I would say to her. And you know why? Because if you can genuinely see some other possibility, which is you with the bonus, which is you with the cars, which is you with the foundation you created helping all those children in Africa, which is you with the abundant financial bank account, with you with the dream part. If you can actually see it in your mind, if you believe it now and take action, it is possible. And I wouldn't have been set in that position. I wouldn't have even had to go through the adversity if I had first known this stuff. If I've been listening to podcasts like this, because when you listen to a podcast, you're being one-to-one -one mentored by that person for the duration of that show. When you read a book, no different. You're being one-to-one -one mentored for the duration of the reading by that person. So I wish that I had known this stuff then, gotten myself a mentor and believed, just listen to that. And how would I respond to it back then? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> probably like, well, actually, knowing my story, I wouldn't be saying, oh, it's easy for you, because actually, I, I'm the one who's been through it. So I would say, OK, well, let me learn from somebody who's been through it. You know, somebody so you like think you, you think you would have been pretty open and receptive if N Natasha Graziano from the future, only not telling you I'm Natasha Graziano from the future, because that would have created its own skepticism. You yeah. think you would have been receptive to this mystery person coming and giving you this advice, even when you were at your lowest of your love? I think at that point when you're, when you, nothing is working. Yeah. I think when nothing yeah. is working, you just actually want somebody to come and just tell you something different. That's you know, why this is interesting. It's interesting. Like, I think you just kind of touched it because I'm thinking about my own life. And for me, my, my lowest of the lows was like 2008. And that's when I discovered the world of online business of at the time it was affiliate marketing. And then I went into other types of digital business and, and, and I was so open because I was so desperate. And it's that same thing Napoleon Hill is saying, how that adversity broke my rhythm and created that openness yeah. because I would, you know, pain, you know, like pain, pain is a, you know, I'm going to suggest, okay, great. I don't like pain. We should as much as possible try to avoid it, but damn it. If it doesn't do a really great job of bringing you into the present. I know. I know. You when know you're what? in the present, you can actually hear things. You know what? This is it. And this is, the, this is the amazing thing, right? I always look back and I think every single thing that's ever happened to me or anybody else, when you look at it in the moment when you're going through it, it breaks whatever you're going through. Pain hits you, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. It's a red light sign Say, honey, you're going in the wrong direction. But at the time, it can feel horrendous. It can be like, no, this is hell. I'm, I'm not in a good way. Why am I having an illness happen to me? Why am I having this happen to me? The why, why, why? But now look at it with retrospect, stand where you are now, where I am now, where you are now. If you've been through anything in your life, look back at anything you've been through, anything at all, any small thing, big thing, any trauma, look back at that and tell me that you can't look back at that and say, actually, that happened for a reason. Actually, 
that benefited you. However bad that trauma may be, it benefited us in some way because it's a part of who we are today and the greatness we are now achieving. We can't look back. If I cannot look back at my illness and say, I wish that had never happened to me because you know what? If I hadn't have been through that illness, it wouldn't have broken the cycle like you so beautifully put. It wouldn't have helped me shift what was going on in my life and transform my life and be able to share this knowledge with the world. Through what you go through, you don't understand how many lives actually you can help just by overcoming it. So I couldn't agree more. And that's why I asked the question is I, I am of the opinion you know, I, I say all the time, I'm like, I don't want people to have to go through some of the things that I went through, yep. but I also don't know how to get people to change without things first, most people without things first getting worse. Sometimes it has to, sometimes it has to, but a lot of people do also have transformations from a super euphoric moment when they're just like, wow, life is so amazing. And I'm just, I want more of this because we can yeah, just- Yeah, we need to, we need to bottle that. We need to figure out how to bottle uh, and distribute that so that people can change without having to suffer. That would be ideal, but I don't know. <laughs> well, it's about, it's about just actually tapping into something that makes you feel good every day. So what makes you feel amazing? So when I put my headphones on and I listen to these particular songs, which are Greek songs, and I just dance around to this, like this certain tempo, I feel amazing. I literally can attract anything that I want to me within a matter of hours, days, weeks through that moment right there. So I can have those transformations now because I understand the opposite of when you're really low and you're feeling at rock bottom, like, oh no, you're actually in a much better place. You can, you can attract more things too. You can achieve more when you're feeling euphoric, when you're feeling good. It's like, do you have a fine? You're having a great day and there's something else great happens. There's something else great happens. It's the same thing. Mm. You can choose to get stuck in a good mood or a bad mood. You can just as easily get stuck in a good mood as you can a bad mood. You ever wake up and you're like, oh no, I have a really bad day. This happened, this happened, this happened. Yeah, because you've stayed in that place, you've got to cut the energy. Yeah. You've got to cut the cycle. You've got to go out, go stretch, go for a run, go sh literally shake the energy. Like I love to go jogging when I'm having a terrible day. I was going to shake the energy in my body. I'll give you... So, so there's, uh, so Napoleon Hill said, uh, what the mind, and you, you essentially paraphrase this a moment ago. You said, you know, that what the mind can believe, what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Yeah. So I, I believe, and, uh, we, I, we have a both, I believe, I'm pretty sure you're connected to him as well. We both have a friend named Evan Carmichael who says the biggest problem in the world is that people don't believe. They don't oh, yeah. believe in themselves, right? And I and I, I tend to agree with him that at least my experience has, has corroborated that, you know, within the laws of reasonable, mostly within the laws of physics, I mean, yeah. I, I me conceiving of myself as having the ability to fly isn't going to do me much good, <laughs> at least not in this universe. But, but within that, what you can conceive and believe, you like actually can achieve. 100%. Uh, and by the way, you won't believe something that is not achievable. So, so that system, that's, that statement kind of reinforces itself, but that ability to believe, you know, the, uh, one of my favorite quotes, St. Augustine said, uh, understanding is the reward of faith. Therefore seek not to understand that thou may believe, seek to believe that thou may understand. Like things start to make sense when they're overlaid with belief, but that ability to believe in good things being possible and in your own intrinsic greatness being manifestable, that is the X factor that I have found more than anything else determines the quality of a person's life. So my question to you is, even at rock bottom, you were still a person who was capable of believing. You had not had all the belief beaten out of you, no, no matter how much adversity. There are other people who might be in the same circumstance, all other things being equal, but lacking that ability to believe that they could be better means they never would, they never will be. So my question to you is where, how is it that even through all of that, you maintained the ability to believe and, and who taught you, how, where did you learn to believe in a way that would allow you to rebound? So it was through what I was listening to. It was through reading the book, The Secret at the time, you know, okay. before I read that 15 years ago now, but it was through listening and reading to something different to what I was used to. 
that's the trigger. So it wasn't like a mentor or a family member or someone that. Oh yeah. I had a, I had a mentor who I didn't know would be a mentor. This is an interesting story. So previously when I was about, uh, so in 2008, I was, I think it was 2008. Yeah. 2008. I was in the mountains in Trudos mountains in Cyprus and I'd been sent away there um, for by my parents at the time. It was my, it was after 18, but anyway, I needed to become a better person. Apparently I wasn't in a great way. They sent me to a monastery and I had to do things every day that I could never even, imagine. it was a great humbling experience. And when I look back on it, it was a beautiful thing that they did. A but monastery anyway, in the mountains of Cyprus yep. sent by your parents as an adult. As an adult, yeah, completely. Okay. And I and I said yes, because I knew that, that there was a reason for it. And you know, it was the best thing that ever happened to me, but. I went for a walk one day and I was walking in the mountains and I was like really losing faith on where I was going in my life, why I was even here. But I knew there was a purpose and I had to just follow it and understand because that's what my father had embedded into my mind. Anyway, and as I was walking in the mountains, I saw this guy meditating. You know, he he was shirtless, sitting down, really, really old guy. I thought he was like 80 something. And he was sitting down, he was meditating. And I was watching his chest go in and out. And he was doing this really cool breathing technique, a bit like a Wim Hof style. And I would watch him and I went back the next day and I'd watch him again from afar. And then gradually I went nearer and nearer and I said, hey, can I join in? And he said, he said, of course, sit down. I said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm, I'm doing different forms of pranayama breathing. He was like an, a, an old yogi. So I said, what, why are you doing it? He said, because I basically live on light and plants. And I was like, how? And he taught me around the breath and et cetera. This is a whole other topic. This breath work ended up being the foundation of my MBS method many years later, but I learned it here from this ancient guy, I guess. Turns out the guy was not 80 something. He was 105 and he was, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost an impossible story. He looked fitter than, than most people. He was so amazing. God bless him. And so I, would, I was learning from the best. Mm. And I would sit and I would take it in, understand this breathing. And he told me it can help heal you. It can cure disease. Breathing is, is what is our biggest blessing. It's the first thing we receive when we come into this life. And it's the last thing that we leave with as we exhale. And I was like, gosh, this is, this is amazing. I want, to, I want to learn more. Anyway, little did I know that I would need that as part of my own healing 10 years later. And so then I went through that trauma with my own illness and I mm. called him and we, I managed to find his details. I'd written it down in an address book and I had to write him a letter to get his number and all this story. Anyway, I finally did get on the phone to him. I mean, it's unbelievable what, what happened, but basically he's, he was still around at that time. He must be one of the oldest people in the world. That's like, not, you know, they don't write it. They don't check it. He just lives in the mountains. Right. And this, this yogi ended up, helping me with understanding breath work, which became the framework for my MBS method. So I then integrated that into my MBS method. So that then there, yeah, there was a person who influenced me. There always is a person that influences you. There yeah, has to be. Because when I hear these one. stories, I just always, it's even like Oprah, right? Like yeah. Oprah was, you know, born out of, you know, this young teenage single mom, like hor- sexually abused, just like horrible, all this stuff. But she, there was like a person, I think it was a grandmother or an aunt or something. There was like one person that she said, that person taught me that life could be good. And that was, that was the fuel I used to do this and that and that and that and ultimately become. And so it just seems like all these stories, there's always a person, there's always a spark of light that teaches us. It's like that we can carry with us even into the dark to just as a reminder that like, oh yeah, life can actually be really awesome. I just need to go back to that. I need to access that energy. Um, 100%. So I, so I assume that would be, tell me a little more about MB. I know we, we, we both are, are going to run out of time here pretty soon. I want to make sure the audience gets to hear a little bit about MBS, a little bit about your book. Obviously, uh, we're recording this in advance of it coming out, but you have a book coming out. Um, please tell us, if you would, a little bit about MBS and then also about this amazing book that you have coming out. Oh, I love it. It actually ties in beautifully because the MBS is, that's what the book's about. The MBS method is what really, I have to say, was the thing that cured me. It took me from being broke and homeless to making a million dollars in a year, financially shifting my entire life to living the my dream life now to literally attracting my soulmate, marrying him last year. Um, and I did that in three weeks using my MBS method. It's meditational behavioral synchronicity. And it's a, a sort of 
mix of ancient breathing techniques with modern day neuroscience, with meditation, with anchoring in your mind, all in altered states of awareness. So it's a little bit like NLP, if you know what that is. And it's where you go deeper into your mind, accessing your higher mind faculties in the alpha and the theta state, and there reprogramming your mind to remove the limiting beliefs. So only really is one thing that's blocking you from everything that you want and getting rid of that one belief and re- Framing your mindset for long-term positive changes. And it's a powerful method, which has been taught, as you said, to, to a really large amount of people now, millions and millions of people have had a chance to do it. Hundreds of thousands of people have had their lives transformed and there's testimonials everywhere and galore in it. But it's a really powerful method because you can transform anything through understanding this form of meditation. Because I didn't used to be able to meditate. I couldn't focus my mind. I was like a bit ADHD. I couldn't do it. I was like, I can't focus. But because of the integrated breathing method that you start with, as I sort of tapped on a minute ago with the yogi, that is where it begins. It takes you deeper. So you're forced to relax. And then you can calm your mind and you can refocus it and choose the version of you you want to be while you're in an altered state of awareness. You keep complete control of yourself in that moment. So it's like a self-hypnosis. Very, very, very powerful transformation. It helped me heal my illness. It helped millions of people in so many ways. I've got friends who are, and clients who have conceived babies from this, who have transformed their businesses, who have been in debt, $150,000. A guy was in $300,000 recently. Within six months of doing this method, he was out of it and was in the plus side. Uh, you know, you can, you can really transform things financially and in business with this and in your own life in any way. You can gain confidence. You can become a new person, essentially. And it's just through practicing this method every day. And we say within about 21 days, you know, usually one time will shift it for you. But 21 days later, that new version of you has become you. And that's where mm -hmm. the book is, Be It Until You Become It. So the book is out 22nd of March. So exciting. And um, I'm just excited for the world to be able to access this knowledge that I feel I was passed down uh, through this from this ancient wisdom. It's all around the neuroscience of the law of attraction explained what we say on the subtitle the law of attraction explained through neuroscience and ancient wisdom so for anyone that's skeptical here's the facts here's the science here's the experiments and here's the people and people who i've helped transform people who have used the mbs method to transform their life to become the version of them they want to be nobody wants to fake it till you make it you don't want to just that quote is not cool it's mm -hmm. like you know you don't want to fake it no be it until you become it literally become that version of you you want to be and embody them through the practices i teach in the book so simple it's like a 12 part method. Do it, own it, become that version of you. And by the time you finish that last page, honey, you are that person. Like you, you and, already are that person. And so based on, you know, this, obviously we're going to, we're going to release this out right after the book comes out. So if you're listening to this, be it till you become it by Natasha Graziano available everywhere. I mean, everywhere, right? Like they can just yep. go online and buy it right now. Go online. Yep. Okay, cool. And it, and it walks through MBS in great detail. Great detail, great detail. And if you, I'm going to give you the link, um, be it till you become it, book.com. You can actually get a free course with it as well, which is so amazing. So it goes alongside it. You get, a, it's worth like $500 and we're just giving it to you for free. So you get to actually be it until you become it. You're going to learn how to accelerate your authority, how to become that version of you, how to unlock the full potential of your mind. And understanding neuroscience and understanding in very simple methods how to achieve that version of you you want to be. And, you know, I have to just comment, you know, how fast your brand is growing because I have a copy of a bio that I, I think was sent to us last year when I was getting ready to come on your show. And it references, you, you kind of pointed this out earlier, it references like over 6 million Instagram followers. I just checked while we've been on it. You're at 9.8. You've you've added over 3 million Instagram followers in what, like, like less than a year? A year maybe? Yeah, literally in just under a year. And that is all from the work that I'm doing. Yeah. It's literally people who are who are unlocking their brain and they're like, talk to me. Like, I, I love it. They and that's the power of this method. I've I've put everything else aside. My whole life is dedicated to this mission of how, like, I just want this mission out there in the world. I want other people to have the life they deserve. 
because everyone deserves to live their greatest life. Everybody deserves to be the best version of them to have, be, and do anything they want and have enough to be able to help in the world and make your money matter. You literally, everybody should be able to do that. If you aren't living your best life right now, if you're not abundantly wealthy in the way you want, you're letting somebody else do it for you. Somebody else is doing it. You can do it too. Just have to start listening to different stuff, reading different stuff, getting into a different community, a different circle, and your reality will change. You know, you said one thing that really jumped out at me um, when you were talking about MBS, and you said you said something to the effect of that there's just one thing, that everybody just has one thing that's holding them back. And when you said that, I mean, like, you know how you get that, that like energetic, almost like tremor when you feel truth? I'm like, yes. And for me, I did this class. It's probably been almost 10 years. It's maybe been eight or 10 years. That was called inner sentence class. And the whole process of the class, it was like 10 weeks to figure out what is your singular, like fixed in place since you were eight years old, inner sentence that has been driving, that has been like behind the wheel of your entire life since you were a kid. And it's just one sentence. And there's this whole process to whittle down all the chatter in your head and get down to this, distill it down in this one sentence. And when I fit, when I, un, and it's like a, it's like a, a, a code, a decoder ring. When you, when I finally decoded what my sentence was and I, every single thing in my life up to that point made sense. And every single thing that has been better than I would have expected up to that point that's happened to me since has been in the release that came from actually figuring out what that sentence was and not being a slave to it anymore. Wow. And, and I'll, I'll share it. My sentence, for example, was I'll be okay if I'm good enough. Yeah. So and I had spent yeah. my entire life up to that point thinking that the way to be okay was to be good enough at this or that thing, like to be a good enough piano player or a good enough business person or a good enough speaker or a good enough husband or a good, like, so I was always having to perform and, and measure up so that I could be okay. And when I, real, when I finally realized, oh, wait, there's other ways to be okay than just as a measure of performance at something, yes. it, it released everything. And so I'm not saying that's anybody else's thing, but that was my thing. But my point is, yeah. I, my experience is consistent with what you said, that there is one thing yeah. that when you can get clear on it, you can get free of it. <sighs> so powerful and you can because it comes down to that one thing that one phrase that one limiting belief that is blocking you from everything it's not loads it's actually just one because if you bring it will it down will it down will it down and you can do this in the subconscious mind you can do this when you're in an altered state of awareness you can also do this in the conscious mind by writing going down the spiral and doing it i do that as an exercise with my clients but when you go down okay when you go down deeper what is that thing and it always always starts the same way I don't feel worthy of when you go all the way to the bottom piece. And why don't you feel like this? And why do you feel like that? Why, why, why? It always comes down to because I don't feel worthy of. And then whatever that thing is, is the, the reason you're not in a loving relationship. Is the reason that people don't seem to stick with you in your business. It's the reason that, et cetera, et cetera. All the things that you are facing, the challenges, the financial problems you're facing, the health problems you're facing, not being happy with anything. Nothing's good enough for you. The grass is always greener because it comes down to you don't feel worthy inside of you. So if you can knock that out, if you can work on that pain, on that suffering, on that one thing that is blocking you, that limiting belief, and my method is the quick route to get rid of it. The quick yeah, route. Even, is- even that language, I don't feel I'm not worthy. Like I could have easily, you know, I didn't have that language, but instead of saying, I'll be okay when I'm good enough, I, I could have easily said, I don't, I don't feel worthy. Yeah. I'm not good enough. Yep. There you go. It's, if you reverse what you said, it's exactly that. And I had these things that I felt like to be worthy, I had to be good enough at these things. Yeah. Yeah. And to just realize that I'm actually okay. I'm yeah. already worthy. Like it, it was, it, it's crazy what it did, man. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. I mean, I know when other people hear this, your book will already be out, but I have to sit here and wait. I can't <laughs> wait for your book to come out. Oh, it's gonna be so beautiful. I'm so excited. Well, you know, we I loved I love hanging out with you. You're such a beautiful soul. And you know, I, I'm I hope your audience has taken something special from this. Um, I've so enjoyed being here with you guys. And, and are you doing you. an audiobook version? 
Yeah, that's coming okay. out very soon as well. So that's a, a special release for those people who want to like just listen to it in their ear while they're working out. But the book itself has so many diagrams in it and so many mm. things. It's just worth reading and like seeing and just like it looks quite ancient as well. It's like a great feature in the house just to like put down. You'll find people will be like, oh, it's bright red. Yeah. So they'll be like, whoa, like it stands out. It's something about it. It's just a really beautiful. Texture. Yeah, there's some books that really you need to buy the physical book. Like I just went through uh, Tim Ferriss's four hour body yeah. book and I had started listening to it on audiobook, And I'm like, I feel like I'm missing half the book. Cause he's always, I could just tell there was visual aids and then I bought it and I'm like, Oh yeah, now it all makes sense. So, yeah. so it sounds like maybe yours is one of those. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It is. Oh. Um, okay. So I know we're, we're like over time and I didn't care. I just went with it cause I was loving the conversation so much, but we got to wrap. Tell the audience um, for the, you know, if they've been living under a rock and they don't know where to find you, tell them how to come find you. Amazing. So for anybody that is, um, I love that, been living under a rock. So you can find me on Instagram. You can find me, Natasha. It's actually under my, my pre-marital name, so Grano. But if you type Natasha Graziano, it still comes up, so you'll see it. I, I can say, if you just type Natasha, it comes yeah, up. It comes I think you're, the, I think you're I the most famous Natasha on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is that anyone else that comes up first of all? No, if you basically just put Natasha G, it will come up. So Instagram, on um, YouTube. YouTube. You can find me everywhere. I love it when you guys send me DMs, like hit me up and ask me about the book. Be like, how do I activate this? What do I do with this? Like ask me questions. I love, love, love getting in touch with you guys. And I do go through my DMs, um, you know, from time to time and, and respond personally. And I actually leave voice notes. That's how you'll know it's me. So, you know, for anyone that's come from Jeff's show, I will prioritize you guys today. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys are on this day, I will be in my DMs. So just like hit me up and, and yeah, we'll make sure to, to answer anything you want, but get in touch. And the book is really life-changing and you will love it. And it's a great gift for somebody who you think just like could actually do with becoming that version of them that they deserve to be. Um, they, you know, they're calling it a modern day version of the, the secret. So mm. that's its like nickname. So you guys will be able to find it there. Yeah, I think we'll put the link here anyway. Yeah, for sure. We'll put all these links uh, in the descriptions wherever this appears. Well, Natasha, congratulations on all the amazingness that is your life. I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't. I don't know if you call it a turnaround or a bounce back or what. But I mean, yeah. it's been a. It's been a four years to watch. Oh sure. yeah, it's been a big. It's a bounce back. <laughs> it was a reset and bounce back. Absolutely, and it came through that getting out that hypnotic cycle as you call it so so yeah. well so yes yeah, it's, it's been a, a real journey so as i told you at the very beginning don't look at who i am now look at how many times i fell down and got back up and i love showing and sharing methods that can help you to get back up every time because rejection you can end up on the floor you can end up just sitting there feeling rejected by yourself your friends your peers, whoever, you can feel like it and you can stay on the floor and stay in a rejected place. And everyone will just walk over you and keep walking by you because honey, they don't care about you. Or you can get back up and start fighting again because every day you have a chance to start fighting again and doing something different. And you got to say to yourself, let's go next one. If you loved that episode, then you're definitely going to love this one. Check it out. But I started journaling about it every day. I journaled about what my future and next level life looked like that I make $10,000. I make $10,000. A month later, I made $10,000. And before that, I had only made like $3,000 tops ever. 